Today we are going to be looking at Frostpunk Console Edition on the Xbox One. Frostpunk is a city-building survival game developed and published by 11-Bit Studios. It was released on PC April 2018 and Xbox October 2019. Console Edition does utilize the cloud storage for saved games. Let's go ahead and look at the settings real quick. As you can see, there are autosaves, but unlike the PC version, it's set to never by default. There is a controller tab that allows you to change the sensitivity and snap strength, and yes, there is vibration. There are several scenarios available, including the Fall of Winter Home DLC that you are able to unlock at Day 20. Let's begin a new home. This is a new loading screen specifically for consoles. It roughly takes about 35 seconds for the game to load. In the last 10 seconds, it displays the controller layout. I think they did an excellent job with controller support, the controller shortcuts, and the radial menu. Everything can be done with relative speed and ease and it's pretty straightforward, especially if you're familiar with the game already. For me, the only critique I have is regarding the graphics. I play my Xbox and PC on the same hardware calibrated 42 inch monitor. The console version has lack of anti-aliasing. There is also vertical and horizontal line crawling, which can be distracting. The PC version on its lowest settings with anti-aliasing disabled doesn't suffer from this line crawling effect and has sharper textures, but there is no controller support. Bear in mind the Xbox was made in 2013 and graphical sacrifices were to be expected and the gameplay is the same. I really like how they did this introduction. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the story, it's set in an alternate 1886. Major volcanic eruptions and the dimming of the sun has caused a volcanic winter. In response, several installations called generators were built by British authorities in the coal-rich north, designed to be city centers in the event that dropping temperatures forced mass migration from the south. In the main scenario, you lead a group of explorers who fled the cold and the hunger of London and in an expedition to find supposed massive coal reserves in the north. Instead, the group gets separated from the main party and discovers a massive heat generator in a giant sheltered crater. You'll begin to face the issue of dwindling hope as the people find out through exploration a similar neighboring city is destroyed. You will have to make hard decisions in order for the people to find purpose and stay hopeful. You will also have to ensure there's enough supplies to make sure the city survives. We have to survive. Here we go. That's our beautiful generator. Let's get to work. First things first, fight the cold. We need to get the generator working by stockpiling the surrounding coal. We just hover over a resource like these wood crates and press A on the controller to bring up the menu. Then we press right D-pad to assign workers. The controller is also able to utilize certain shortcuts not found in the PC version. We can use the right joystick to zoom in and zoom out. Let's assign some workers to gather that coal. We can use the left and right D-pad buttons to speed up, slow, or pause time.
Here we can access the generator menu and turn it on and off with left and right D-pad. However, I'm going to turn it on via controller shortcut. Our next task will be to provide raw food and build a cookhouse to prepare meals. In the PC version, you click individual buttons to bring up their corresponding menu. In the console version, we are given a radial menu. The Book of Laws provides the basis of rules and direction for the new city. The choice of laws chosen and disregarded will have significant effects on the population reflected in hope and discontent. Let's go ahead and require children be put to work. Sometimes the ends justify the means, right? Now they want me to build homes as well? These people will certainly require a lot of attention, don't they? Let's provide shelter for everyone in two days. Beware the consequences of breaking promises. We can go ahead and build the tents. Looks like we have collected enough wood already. Tents are thinly insulated, but better than sleeping on the ground. It's best to build them by the generator at the start and upgrade them into better housing later on. Wisdom of the crowd. People usually look for the quickest solution, not the best one. I can certainly believe it. Let's go ahead and assign those children to work and gather more wood. To feed the city, we have to fall back on an ancient practice and commission our workers to go out into the frozen wastes and hunt and gather whatever wildlife they can find. That's where constructing the hunter's hut comes in. Food is the fuel that keeps both your people and the economy going, and without it they become weak, sick, and eventually starve to death. The problem is that with such a scarcity of resources, we cannot afford to give people coal or wood to cook their own food, but we can't let them eat raw food either, because eating uncooked food is an easy way of getting sick in these frigid conditions. To solve this problem, we construct cookhouses. We need to reassign some of these workers from gathering wood crates to the hunter's hut. Shelter promise fulfilled. Hope rises. The game will be lost if hope falls too low and remains at that level for too long. Hope is affected by laws and to a lesser degree buildings. This is the economy screen where you can get details about consumption, status, and how many workforce are assigned to available buildings. The categories have been moved to the top instead of the left side and you can cycle with LB and RB. City info is a new screen that displays information that is available on mouse over on the PC version. People from our convoy. We have completed that set of tasks. Now we have to build a workshop for research, a beacon to create scouts, and then rescue the survivors. Looks like people are starting to fall ill. I don't appear to have enough wood to build an infirmary just yet. I do have 30 workers collecting wood. Let's speed up the time. Not sure why the time went back to normal speed. Shift change, maybe? Normally it will return to normal time to make sure you don't miss anything important. I have collected enough steel, so let's build our workshop. Building the workshop results in the ability to research improvements and new buildings.
New law is available. Let's go ahead and set a new one, shall we? Cemetery will establish a burial ground so we can lay our dead to rest with dignity and respect. When selecting a new law related to buildings, you will be tasked with constructing them relatively quickly. This building appears to not be functioning at the moment. Looks like we don't have enough raw food. Our workshop is completed. Let's assign some engineers. We don't appear to have any available at the moment. The technology tree details all of the current items that can be researched. Let's find where the engineers are currently being assigned. In the PC version, the workforce is displayed on the lower right, while on the console it has been moved to the upper right and accessible by pressing X. We will unassign the engineers from these wood crates and assign them to the workshop. Let's assign the remaining unemployed to these wood crates using the controller shortcuts. You can assign new tech either at the workshop or using the radial menu. The categories can be switched with RB and LB. Our task is to research beacons. Someone is demanding our attention. Child injured at work. A child got distracted. This is a consequence of selecting the child labor law. Often you're confronted with moral choices and dilemmas that can have an effect on difficulty. Family torn apart. We'll do what we can. That's right, we still have to fix raw food. We need to build an additional hunter's hut and assign workers. The hunter's hut requires roads, so we're going to have to build roads. This is where I tend to notice controller sensitivity. You can change it if you desire in the options menu. Roads serve several purposes, travel and transport of resources and second, pipes and electrical cables which provide heat and power to any of the buildings further away from the generator. Beacon has been researched. Now we have to build the beacon. It looks like I haven't gathered enough steel. I need to find and reassign some workers. Then let's assign them to the steel wreckage using the controller shortcut. Go ahead and increase the time. Several coal piles have been depleted, leaving unemployed workers. We can assign them to the hunter's hut. Now we just need to select our next research. Faster gathering is a great early game research to have. 15% bonus to civilian gathering. I just realized I forgot about gathering posts. Oh well. I should build that cemetery. Half the time has already been expired. I also need to get around to building that infirmary as people are beginning to get ill. A protective mother wants to let her child have a day off. 
another moral choice related to the child labor law. Yeah, it looks like at 5 a.m. time returns to normal speed. By pressing the select button, we can visually see building heat distribution. The lower the heat, the increase in illness risk, and at a relatively quick point, buildings such as infirmaries will cease to function. Treat the gravely ill. They want me to assign a new law. I chose radical treatment. Infirmaries can treat the gravely ill and 30% will be left as amputees unable to work for the foreseeable future. Oh wow, it's really getting cold. I can use the controller shortcut to toggle overdrive on the generator. It increases heat, consuming additional cold, but accumulates stress and will explode if it reaches 100%. I forgot to research heaters first, so the infirmary we just built and the cookhouse are no longer operational. Frostbite. This will keep happening if people have to work in such cold. I see. We still need to build that beacon. I don't have enough steel yet. Faster gathering research has been completed. Let's research heaters. Heaters gives us a toggle and allows us to raise heat of non-residential buildings by one, by consuming one coal every hour. Heaters are particularly valuable to early game infirmaries and cookhouses. Now we have enough to build the beacon. The beacon functions as both a lookout post and lighthouse. It allows us to send out scouts to search the wilderness for goods and survivors. Beacon is built, no longer lost and blind. Nice little cutscene. Now we have access to the Frostland map. We need to go to the Lost Expedition Waypoint. To do that, we have to purchase a scout at the beacon. Let's create a scout and then assign it to the Lost Expedition. And away we go. Ready to search. I can introduce a new law. Let's do care house. If you're unable to work, you'll only eat half as much and it reduces the burden of infirmaries. Okay, care house is underway. Let's build the street. As you can see, a lot of people are getting ill. Normally you would build an infirmary for every five patients. Care promise fulfilled. And people have died. I'm just trying to finish this video and going as quick as I can. Whoa, we almost blew that generator up. We need to turn off the overdrive. That was seriously really close. Scouts have reached their destination. So we just zoom out using the right joystick to access the Frostland map. Then our scout escorts the survivors back to our city. 
What? Now these people want double rations for their kids too? Fine, whatever. We aren't even making any food rations because heaters isn't researched yet. Let's fast forward. Heaters researched. Awesome. So you can select a building and toggle the heater, or you can use the controller shortcuts. And the scouts have returned with the slave <clears throat> workers. We are presented with a cutscene. Reunions, we will look for the others. Thank you for watching.